Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to skim coat over a painted popcorn ceiling. I'll also explain why you're probably better off skim coating a painted popcorn ceiling than scraping it. I'll be using a 14 inch drywall taping knife, a 16 inch mud pan, and USG all purpose joint compound for the skim coating over the painted popcorn ceiling. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. My name's Paul and I've been a drywall and painting contractor for over 20 years. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and also the bell notification. Let's get into this video. All right, so I wanted to show you the room. It's a pretty good sized room and the painted popcorn ceiling before I start skim coating. So I will be doing this room in three different sections long ways. It is an older popcorn ceiling that's been painted many, many times. So the best option is to go ahead and skim coat over it instead of even attempting to scrape it off. There's a couple reasons you don't wanna go disturbing this with a scrape, and I'll get into that in a minute. Um, this is a DIY drywall ceiling repair they attempted. I'm gonna make that right too. Like I said, it's an older ceiling, so you gotta watch out for asbestos and lead paint. Anything before say 1982, you definitely want to get it tested. They actually stopped making asbestos and lead products in paint and textures in 1978, but companies were allowed to use their back stock. And the problem with that is they mass produced knowing they weren't going to be able to manufacture with those hazardous materials any longer. All right, so I'm using a 14 inch drywall taping knife and a 16 inch mud pan. You can use a 12 inch taping knife and a 14 inch mud pan if that's what you more comfortable with. I uh, did mix up the all purpose joint compound with just a little bit of water just to get it kind of creamy and get any air pockets out. And I also want to keep it pretty thick to cover a heavy texture like this. So basically, I'm getting the joint compound up on the ceiling and over the painted popcorn. And then I'm going to just go over it to smooth it out. This is the first of two skim coats. But you can see that it's going to be pretty smooth after the first. There's some ridges but I'll be able to take care of that. So again, I'm just getting the mud up. I'm going to smooth it out here in a moment. If you notice, I'm kind of placing the joint compound on my knife over on the left side a little more than the right. I'm just trying to get a consistent pull each time. And you want to leave it a little thick. The more you go over it, the more ridges you're going to get. You kind of just want to get a couple pulls on it and leave it alone. Um, I do have a video of what I do after the first coat's dry. I'll just take my six inch taping knife and kind of scrape any high ridges off. And when you're going against the popcorn that you haven't skim coated yet, you can get some chatter. So you kind of want to Keep your knife lifted off the popcorn so it doesn't leave a lot of chatter, which creates a bunch of lines. It's a little more tedious over a popcorn ceiling because it's such a heavy texture. If you're just skim coating, say, a wall with an orange peel texture or a knockdown texture, it goes a lot quicker. I have got a lot of questions. Can I use the paint roller trick for skim coating on a popcorn ceiling? I always say no, you can't because in order to use the paint roller trick, you need to thin down the joint compound a little more than you want to when you're going over this heavy of a texture. So I like to do the popcorn ceilings by hand, but if you're doing walls, most definitely you can use the paint roller trick for skim coating. I'm on this project all by myself, so I'm going to be doing this ceiling in three different sections. It's a huge room. So I'll do this side, and then I'll skip the middle and head over to the other side. That way I'm not going into any wet mud. And then once both sides are dry, I'll skim coat the center. 
This is going to be a whole series, so I'm just going to do this section in this video. I wanted to get the whole process for you so you could eventually tackle a popcorn ceiling to skim coat yourself. Or these techniques also work for skim coating walls. Just want to get any big voids or divots and pay special attention to the corners. You don't want to leave big humps in the corners. So uh, I go over the corners a couple times and that's usually about the thinnest I leave the skim coat. Let me know in the comments if you have a popcorn ceiling that needs a skim coat. And really, if you're going to be skim coating over a popcorn ceiling, it should be painted. If you try to skim coat over just a popcorn ceiling that has not been painted, it could blister and bubble as you skim coat. So you definitely want to do this over a painted popcorn ceiling. Get a little mud. Now, if it hasn't been painted and it's an older ceiling and you're concerned about asbestos or lead, you could go ahead and prime that ceiling and then do skim coating over that. You just need to lock down that popcorn or you're going to have a big mess. All right, so there is the skim coated section. I've got a little more to go. I just wanted to drop down, uh, move my walk boards, and then show you what I got so far. Like I said, I'm going to do this whole side section in this video. I'm going to show you some of the details, some of my tricks. As you can see, this, only, this section only took me about eight minutes. So I'm going to do one more section. Leave me any questions down in the comments. Again, I'm just going to get the mud up there and then smooth it out. I'm not applying a lot of pressure. I want to leave as much mud up there as possible, but yet keep it as smooth as possible. This bigger knife allows me to go a little faster and that matters to me. But if this is your home that you want to skim coat with painted popcorn ceilings, you can take your time. You don't have to have a wet edge. If you get tired or something, you can just stop and then drop back and start over again after it's dry and it's not a problem at all. All right, going to get a little mud real quick. I want to let you know I do have videos on how to mix the skim coat mud and how to cover different textures, smooth walls. I'll leave links to all those videos down in the description. And if you stick around to the end of the video, I'm going to show you a little more up close and personal skim coating of the ceiling and how it looks after I have two sections done. But in the meantime, let's get back to the skim coating. Again, I'm just going to Get it up there and then smooth it out. I'm going to try and leave as much mud as possible. That way the second skim coat is going to be a breeze. I like the 14 inch knife. It just covers more ground and then the 16 inch mud pan holds a lot more joint compound for skim coating. Let me know in the comments if you're a DIYer, contractor, painter, handyman. Just kind of curious who's watching these videos. All right, so, whoa. Here I'm smoothing it out and I'm putting pressure on the right side of the knife. You can see the line 
forming on the right side, but then on the left it stays nice and smooth. It's a great little trick for getting a pretty darn smooth skim coat. Pressure on the right, lifting on the left. I'm working on the Werner walk boards, which make it really handy. If I'm on a ladder, I just can't get as much ground covered. These walk boards make it super simple. There's just too much stuff in this room to even attempt to walk on the stilts. I always try to be safe on the stilts and have a nice open area when I'm using those. So, On the walk boards, I believe it took for both skim coats, four five gallon buckets of the all-purpose joint compound. And no, there's no dust coming off the ceiling whatsoever. It's been painted so many times that it's just a solid surface with a bumpy texture on it. I got a little more mud. I'm going to go ahead and smooth this out from this side. Try and get rid of some of those uh, chatter marks created from the heavy popcorn that kind of sticks down and makes the knife want to chatter. So you don't want to go over it a whole bunch of times if you can help it. But if you spot some areas that need some more mud, now's the time to hit them. I'll be getting that repair coming up in the next video. I uh, primed it with some uh, oil-based kills and a spray can because there is a water line where I guess there had been a leak and then the homeowner's grandson tried to fix it and that didn't turn out so hot. But at least he tried. I give him credit for that. He needs to come watch my videos. I love doing the skim coating. Um, the homeowners are at work, so when they come home, they're just going to be amazed at how much got done and how much the ceiling already looks better without that hideous painted popcorn. You just want to pace yourself. You don't want to try and run around too hard. Pace yourself. Get a nice, smooth surface or as best as you can, try not to leave any big lines. That's the key. No big lines, nice tight corners, and you should be good to go. Pressure on the right, lifting the left. Pressure on the right, lifting the left. As you see, there's no lines being created from the tape and knife. Wax on, wax off, Daniel-san. Basically all it is. Repetitious, you get the feel for your knife, it becomes an extension of your arm. I've made a pretty good living at doing drywall and drywall repairs. So for you young bucks, practice. Keep practicing. Skilled labor is getting harder and harder to find. Looks pretty good. Looks pretty good for a first coat. All right, so here's this first section. Pretty darn smooth considering the hideous painted popcorn texture that I went over. Like I said, I won't even sand in between the skim coats. I'll come back with my six inch taping knife and just kind of scrape off any of the little ridges. But I'm happy with this. Waiting for that kills to dry on that water stain and I'll skim coat that out. 
This will be dry probably in about 12 hours. All right, so here is the second section. Wearing my GoPro, get up close to it so you can see exactly what I'm doing, how I'm placing the mud, how I'm pulling. It's a pretty heavy popcorn. Just placement of the mud and no lines. That's what you're shooting for. Stay tuned for that video. Here is the second section that I skim coated. The center is not done. I did both sides. Coming up in the next video, I'll show you the whole process on the second section. But as you can see, it's coming together pretty quick. And this is a huge room. I'll leave links down in the description to some asbestos and lead test kits that you can buy online to test your popcorn ceiling. And if you enjoyed this video, leave me a hashtag drywall tube down in the comments. I really appreciate that. If you want to step up your drywall, texturing, or painting game, be sure to hit that round icon in the middle of the screen now to keep up with all my latest videos. If you've got a friend that's a contractor or DIYer, be sure to share this video with them on Facebook or Twitter. Thanks so much for watching. There's more of my most popular video links down below in the description.